Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Welcome once again to Truth in History. On the program today, we will, we will be reading a lot of Scripture from the book of Jeremiah. Because we want to talk about Jeremiah the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was a man that was anointed by God. He was chosen before his birth to be a prophet to his nation, the nation of ancient Judah. Now, Jeremiah was from a priestly family and from the tribe of Levi, but yet he functioned as a prophet. He did not function as a priest. He was born and raised in the town of Anathoth, and he lived in the 7th and 6th centuries B.C. And the historical setting for the ministry of Jeremiah, no doubt he was called by God as a child. And he grew up in the environment of Jerusalem, ancient Jerusalem, and he saw the conditions that were taking place. He recognized the social, the religious, and the political, the cultural conditions that existed in his day. And he was not happy about it. Because no doubt Jeremiah, as a young boy, was raised by godly parents. Parents that believed and obeyed the law of Moses and had a heart towards God and instilled in this young man, they instilled, his, his parents instilled in this young man the knowledge of the law of God that God gave Moses and the history of Israel and this was years after the kingdom had divided. The northern tribes, known as Ephraim or the tribe of Joseph, had long been gone into Assyrian captivity. And the Lord said through Jeremiah and other prophets, Judah, you're going the way of your sister Ephraim. And unless you repent, there's going to be dire consequences to your action, your sinful life. Now, the people not only sinned, individuals, but the nation itself had taken on a sinful countenance, the nation of Judah. And Jeremiah began his ministry while King Manasseh was on the throne. And King Manasseh was that king in Judah that the record says filled Jerusalem with innocent blood. What do you think that innocent blood was? It was taking their children, their babies, their innocent ones, and sacrificing them to Baal. That's the condition, the moral and spiritual condition, that Jeremiah started his ministry. Well, the condition that existed back then still exists today. 
But Jeremiah was not a man to ignore the, the iniquity that was taking place in Judah. Because God had put something in him. God had put something deep within this man to cry out against the national sins of his people. And I want to read several verses of Scripture throughout the book to, to, for us to catch a picture, for us to be able not to sympathize, but to empathize with this prophet of the social and the spiritual condition that brought about a distress within his heart and mind. Jeremiah was in a state of depression part of the time. In fact, he said, Lord, how long are these conditions going to last without you taking some action? Well, I feel the same way today. And folks, those of you who are watching me today, I think, I hope that by now that you know that I am not striving to be a popular preacher. In fact, I'm probably the least popular or maybe the least liked on television because we are living in a day and age that is equal, that has surpassed the sins and the iniquities of the days of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 2, if you're following along with me, I'd like for you to open your Bible to the book of Jeremiah, turn to chapter 2, and verse Number one, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espouses, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the firstfruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. What is this saying? This is saying that when the Lord chose the people of Israel and Judah in their youth, they were in love with the Lord. He says, the kindness of their youth and the love of of their espousals. Now, in the early days of America, when the pilgrims came to this country and the Puritans came to this country, we have all read the document called the Plymouth or the Mayflower Compact that was signed on the ship before they got off and came to Plymouth Rock. And in there it states, we are coming to establish the kingdom of God on these shores and to establish the church of Jesus Christ and to evangelize the heathen. And even when the preacher came to Jamestown, they proclaimed that the continent in which we stand shall be the base for the dissemination of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And it has become that. But that was in America's youth. But when we drop down to verse number 4 of this same chapter, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. He says this, Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity! Have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain? What iniquity have 
our forefathers, yes, going all the way back to the 1600s, coming up through the 1700s, and into the era of the American Revolution, we'll say, and the humanistic concepts that came out of the French Revolution that began to be incorporated into our documents. What iniquity, the Lord said to Judah, and the Lord is saying to America, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that you have turned your back on me and gone far from me? What has the Lord done to us that was evil, that was hurtful? We have turned our back on the Lord. Now, folks, many of you, you, you see this. You're as old as I am or maybe older. And you're living in America in a nation that was not the same nation in your youth. In the early days of American education, the Bible itself was the textbook along with the McGuffey readers. And they taught the alphabet to children by using every word of the alphabet from the Bible, A for Adam. and so forth. But the Bible's not allowed in the school anymore. In fact, the Supreme Court in one case said, take those Ten Commandments down from the, from the schoolhouse wall just in case some of the students might want to obey them. How asinine. How ridiculous. And this that decision came down from the nine men on the bench in black robes. The most, quote, intelligent men that we have remove the Bible, outlaw prayer. You might offend somebody. I remember when I was in school, Come Christmas time, we talked about Christ, sang Christmas carols, and there was a Jewish student in the class, and he was just simply given the permission to not show up that day. There was no big deal about it. He didn't want to celebrate Christmas, and his parents didn't want him to celebrate or hear the, the songs or sing the songs or hear about the birth of Christ. So. He was just simply given a leave of absence until, but now you have a lawsuit. But I noticed that the lawsuits are only towards Christians, or towards Bible-believing people. Well, I think you understand where I'm coming from. Also in verse 11, verse 11 Jeremiah is speaking to the people, and he said, Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. We have gone in this nation, starting out as a Christian nation. Now, some people say, this nation did not start out as a Christian nation, but I believe that there was a, con a Christian biblical consensus in the minds of most people and in the minds of our leadership. Because if you will read the original constitution of many of the states, the 13 colonies, in order to hold public office, you had to believe in both the Old Testament and the New Testament and make a confession that you believed 
that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. But the religion clause was soon removed from those constitutions. Soon removed. So we went from serving the God of Israel, Jesus Christ, and recognizing His deity. Who are we worshiping today? We are worshiping ourselves, the apex of secular humanism. Secular humanism actually dethrones the Lord Jesus Christ and sets man up, oh, that which satisfies me, that which satisfies the masses. Give people license to give full expression of their passions. Sigmund Freud all over again. We should call him Sigmund Fraud because that's what he was. But his philosophy and the philosophies that came out of the French Revolution, the fatherhood of God, of all men, the brotherhood of all men, liberty, fraternity, and those type of concepts. They're God now. So Jeremiah is asking the people of his day, hath a nation changed their gods which are really no gods? We are going, folks, we are going to reap the consequences. Our children, and especially our grandchildren, are going to reap the consequences of our generational sins. Well, in verse number 17, Jeremiah chapter 2, Hast thou not procured this unto thyself? Now, what was he talking about? Jeremiah lived in a day in which the Babylonian Empire was threatening invasion and the captivity of the city of Jerusalem. And he says, the lion is roaring, and the lion makes waste of all these other nations, because Babylon was on the rise, they had conquered Egypt. They had defeated Assyria in war. And now Babylon was the king of the empires of that day. And the, the lion is roaring now. And he's roaring towards the city of Jerusalem. And Jeremiah says, Hast thou not procured this unto thyself? In other words, haven't you brought this invasion on by the wickedness of your people? Not the wickedness of Nebuchadnezzar, not the wickedness of the Babylonian Empire, but you brought it upon yourself. People of Jerusalem, people of America, look at the Muslim invasion into Europe. Look into the Muslim invasion in America. Look at the Muslim influence that's now in Congress, American Congress. We brought this on ourselves because of our own wickedness. Now, folks, I'm not trying to win friends or influence people. I'm not in a popularity contest. I'm looking at the Scripture of the prophet Jeremiah and applying it to our own nation today. This foreign element called the Babylonians came against Jerusalem, and Jeremiah said, people, this is your own fault. We see the influence of 
Islam against the white Christian Western world, including America and Canada. You ought to read some of the things that's going on in Canada because of the influence. Because, see, these people not only bring in their culture, they bring in their religion. They bring in their law system. So, in some places, they're demanding Sharia law. And Jeremiah says, didn't you bring this on yourself? In that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? We have forsaken the Lord. And the Lord has allowed the foreigners to invade our nation. You say, well, that's offensive. Well, don't you think Jeremiah was offending people in his day? That's why they threw him in the pit. That's why they, quote, cut him off television. He was offending people. But we have brought this sin in ourselves, And I haven't even begun to point out some of the sins that our forefathers have committed to bring us into bondage this day in which we live. And I know the younger people are probably not listening to me. They probably don't care anyway. But the older people that has seen the transition from civility to insanity in this nation. I think you understand what I'm saying. Also in verse 19, Jeremiah tells the people, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. Yes, our tolerance of anything and anybody to come into our borders. And that Statue of Liberty that is in New York Harbor, now I know I may offend somebody, stands for good and bad. But when Emma Lazarus wrote the words that's inscribed at the bottom, give me your masses, give me your tired, your poor, your depressed, just give me everybody. Now we see what's happened. In some places of this nation, you don't even know you're in America. You look around and you say, I'm in a third world nation. And more and more people are telling me that from all over the country. In their neighborhood is a third world nation. The same thing happened in Jeremiah's day. And it says, Thine own iniquity shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Know therefore, and see that it is an evil thing and bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Because when we go down to verse number 25, that last verse, or that last phrase, he sums it up. For I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. Now this is a hard message. I know it's an offensive message. Very offensive. That's why you don't hear it preached from the pulpits, or from the camera screen, uh, screen. You don't see it from the over the over the TV. It gets you in trouble. But this is the word of the Lord to Judah, and this is also the word of the Lord to America. Jeremiah said it. He's my source. 
and God was his source. So folks, there is a phrase in here in verse 25, four words. You might want to underline it in your Bible. Jeremiah 2.25, it says, There is no hope. This is my prediction. I'm not a prophet. I'm not the son of a prophet. But just watching the transition that has taken place in America and seeing the way that iniquity is building up, the cup of iniquity is getting full. My prediction is that the, the civil state, the state itself, that is the body politic of America, is going to collapse. It's going to be taken over by foreign elements. It won't be in my day, maybe not even in our son's day, but in our grandchildren's day, maybe great-grandchildren. This nation is going to be taken over completely by foreign elements. That is foreign as far as racial and religious and psychological, philosophical, political, foreign elements, it's going to be taken over. God help us, because we have thrown out the Lord Jesus Christ as our God. Now, many of you receive our magazine. If you have never received it, we would love to send it to you. And it will be free of charge. You may write us a letter, call us on the phone, or send us an email, and I want to encourage you to check out our YouTube channel and also our website, truthandhistory.org. You will find more material there that I think will be helpful to you because we're crying out, we're trying to cry out to whoever will listen. I mean, just as a witness, if nothing else, that God keeps a record of every nation and our nation has forsaken the Lord Jesus Christ as our God. We have turned to secular humanism, and we're going to suffer the consequences because the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back, and He's going to judge us according to our national sins. God help us, I pray. For any material offered on this program, or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you, and may God bless you for your response to this end-time ministry, Truth in History, where the Word of God is not bound.